Hi, I'm David Sanasi. I'm CTO of Voclia. Um, and that means that I manage the technical side of the team um, and all the, the people. I, I'm also quite a hands-on CTO, so I do a lot of coding as well um, and a lot of thinking about what we're going to build next and where we're going as a company. So it's, it's an all-encompassing all role with writing code, looking after people, deciding what we're going to do and keeping everything running. So when I started, uh, we were at the early stages and there, there, was, there was focus primarily on pitch and on triggers. And we put a lot of effort initially into triggers and we really nailed that down. I was absolutely over the moon with it. We smashed it. Um, and then there's the effect system, which came a little bit later on, just before we produced Doubler. Again, I think we nailed that really, really good system. Um, and that worked really well with the pitch to kind of make that whole experience better. So coming together with pitch, you get a little bit more, a lot more control uh, if you're using the effect system. Um, pitch, really happy with it. And there were some options that were real time, but it's a ridiculously hard problem in real time. So I feel we moved the needle forward and Internally, we're delighted with what we managed to achieve because we know how difficult the problem is. Um, but you know, then there's what users expect. Like, pitch should be perfect. Um, and we are, you know, continuing to improve that. We've released the VST, which is non-real time, which is a little, a lot easier than real time. Um, uh, but yeah, generally, every time we do do a, a, even a small improvement to pitch, we're just we're really happy because it's very, very hard to move the needle. Um, but yeah, just to sum up, over the moon with all of it. So AI works into Doubler in a few ways. I mean, AI, let's just define it. It's quite a general term. Um, and I will say that in the context I'm thinking of it, it's um, you know machine learning and advances in that way. I mean, actually, that's what AI is really today. Um, and we apply AI to our trigger system. Uh, that's it's fundamental to it. So it's detecting the signature of the the, the plosive sound that you're making, um, and it's making a very quick statistical guess on that using uh, neural networks, very much AI. Uh, the other system that uses neural networks and AI is our effect system, the control dials. Um, yeah, so that is working in real time, going through a neural network and predicting what that what that's using. Um, Pitch uses less AI um, currently, um, and it's just a problem that we've tried to apply AI to, and we might continue. Um, but applying AI to pitch at the moment is, uh, it, it adds even more latency to what's already there. So that's, you know, we're still moving towards it. We're looking at other areas of AI. So we can't, we're actually working on a few kind of projects at the moment that are you know, not the things that have been seen in Doubler 2. And uh, we have a full-time dedicated AI engineer now, which is great. And he is now looking at a few different areas of AI to kind of uh, augment what we what we have and improve what we have in, it, in, in, in Doubler and our products in general. My favorite Doubler feature has got to be triggers. Um, it's something that we worked on at the early stages of the company, and it was really novel and we got it to a point I was really, really happy with, and it kind of adds a magic uh, when you see someone doing it, especially like a professional beatboxer. It's awesome, so definitely my favorite. Especially when we, we began, we work, worked with quite a lot of beatboxers whilst working on the trigger system. And we were using triggers as like augmented reality triggers. So we'd have the beatboxer beatboxing and you could hear all their beatboxing, but then we used the triggers with like a massive drum kit um, augmenting, like added to certain things. So their kicks would become like a massive kick drum. Uh, their snares would be a massive snare. So you've got all of the kind of mixed in complexity of a beatboxer, but with like a, the, the real sounds of like a drums there, and it was a mix. Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, yeah, we've, we've always been a small team taking on more work than we have people really. Um, and that's good because we become efficient. We cut out the stuff we can't do. We focus on the things that we can do. Um, at the moment, you know, on the on the app team, we have two senior engineers, one junior engineer, and one junior mid-level AI engineer. 
Um, so, you know, it's quite tight to do the things that we're trying to do. Um, and what, so what we need really, when I'm, when I'm hiring, I hire for people, uh, primarily for culture, because we need to get on with people. They need to be friendly and nice people. So that's the most important thing. And the second thing is, um, I'm looking for people who seem to be quite, who can think on their feet um, and they're, they're talented because I, we might have a problem today that, it, that they, they're, they're experienced with, but tomorrow there might be something a little bit different that they haven't seen before. I want to be confident that they can attempt that, you know, and be happy and uh, get through it and enjoy it. So yeah, primarily culture and skills second, but culture first. Right, well, when we add a new feature to Doubler, we, first of all, it goes, it's a, t it's a team, team effort, really. Actually, that's the one time where everyone in the team is, uh, is, has a say, like yourself, Icon. Um, uh, but often, you know, uh, George, our CEO, Marie, our designer, um, Sarah, our product manager, uh, they're coming together uh, and I'm involved as well. Like, what is it that users are asking for? Also, what is it that users aren't asking for, but we're recognizing that they could find useful? Um, and we, we get together and we, we ideate, we pitch a load of ideas, uh, and then we narrow down on what we think is most important, what is going to help the users the most. Um, and, and then we think about the, the ideas that we have, and we narrow down, them down on not, what is, not just what is going to be most useful, but what can we realistically do? And what can we execute well? Because you could have amazing technology, but if the user experience is bad, then it's bad, right? So we, uh, we narrow it down, we go through des design phases where the designer is working with me, um, we're prototyping what that might feel like, we keep prototyping, and then once we're happy, uh, it's then it's that stage at which we, we, we say, right, okay, we've got this amount of time, this is what we want it to look like, and we put our heads down and we work on it. Oh no, not at all, no, no. I'm, I'm kidding, no, I use uh, chat GPT all the time. It's, um, I, I'd say all of, all of our developers use it all the time. It's been a complete revelation uh, because it's not that we get it to write code for us per se, but it's, it's like having a friend who has all the knowledge in the world right there, um, especially about really obscure coding things that take years to develop or you need some particular expert to tell you. And ChatGPT just knows because it's read so much information. Um, so yeah, I, I would say just by using ChatGPT, um, I've doubled my productivity because it's, it's like I've got an expert kind of telling me things. And in the past, it used to be loads and loads of Googling and then half the results were useless. And then you still have to trawl through and really find out that information. And that's not to say you can trust everything that ChatGPT gives you. Quite often it's a load of nonsense, but yeah, on average, massive thing for all of the developers. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sponsored in any way by OpenAI. But... That's what I was going to say, we can sell this <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty, pretty important. Um, I would have to say, I mean, this is pretty random, but um, Calibre, <laughs> who is my favorite drum and bass artist. Uh, I don't think he'd need Doubler, but it would be just such amazing validation to have an artist who's that talented use Doubler. Um, I think it's going to vary from person to person, but he's my favorite artist, so there you go. I really like going for an after work beer. I know it's not uh, the most uh, exciting answer, but yeah, absolutely. I just love coming into the office, working hard with a few people and then, you know, going to the pub, sometimes working at the pub and, and having a beer. It's, it's great. Uh, I think I love that aspect of the culture of Vauclia.